Uh, next step is gas standards. The most cause of confusion with gas standards is that people confuse between gas characteristics or gas properties of the actual gas which is measured and gas standard because this is not the same. The gas characteristics we, which we are about to measure, so that's the gas we're actually measuring, has certain properties and these properties have to be measured or dialed in in order to be compensated. So that's basically for the measurement, you don't need the gas standard. The gas standard only tells you how the measurements are displayed. Because from these gas characteristics, let's say we're measuring a very hot gas or a very humid gas. When it's measured, it's calculated into standard liters or standard liters per second or into, into kind of standard conditions. However, those standard conditions, unfortunately, have not become a standard for displaying. And then the whole measurements are recalculated and then displayed in a certain, I call it in a certain world or in a certain standard, which is the gas standard. So that's, that's something people very often confuse. They say, okay, we want to measure proximal to the patient, so we have to take a gas standard which, is humidity, which, is a, which includes humidity. It's not. You just have to take that into account when you measure. And how you display is yet another, yet another topic. So that's something which, which creates a lot of confusion, the gas standard. You have to match the gas standard of your calibration device with the gas standard your equipment you're going to measure with is displaying the data. So in the case of Bella Vista, Bella Vista has displays everything in a gas standard AP21. And mm -hmm. if I have my, my PF300 set in another gas standard, I might have serious, serious measuring differences. If I set oh, I PF300 to AP21, the same measurement may be accurate. And I'll ha I have a display on my, uh, 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 a nice example on my slides. So you have to match up display characteristics of your vent and display characteristics of your um, measuring device. So all, all these different properties. And what also comes, I mean, these devices, they're, they're designed for air and oxygen. So if you measure another gas, for example, um, nitric oxide or um, nitrogen or anything like that, you have to tell the PF300 that it is, it is a different gas with different kind of, uh, you know, viscosity and all that kind of thing. The oxygen, the built-in oxygen cell of the PF300 also compensates the effect of oxygen. Now, if you never use oxygen, you can sell, you, you can set the PF300 on air exclusively. And then any inaccuracy which may come from a decalibrated oxygen cell just goes away. If you just, if you just say it's air which is coming and not air plus oxygen, it's just air. Yeah. And then you, you, you rule that out, even though the effect of oxygen percentage is really low. It's really it's surprisingly low. But in the in the one percent or two percent range, which in in most practical cases is out of consideration. Oxygen cell is a chemical sensor, like a battery, and it consumes oxygen, creates out of this oxygen, makes a, a voltage, and this voltage is red. Now, chemical processes are never stable, and they tend to well, they consume the oxygen cell is consumed like a battery, and so you have to regularly recalibrate it. And in the PF three hundred, to recalibrate the oxygen cell. You need oxygen and you need air and you need a flow of 25 liters. So when you when you start up, when you really want to do measurements, which are oxygen, which where you want to qualify or quantify the oxygen, then you first have to recalibrate this oxygen cell. It's in the menu. It's in the menu of the PF300. Um, yep. You start it. It will tell you. It will tell you that you need so much flow. And then you first comes the 100% oxygen point. It's like a two-point calibration. You know, it's a linear sensor, but a two-point calibration will, will uh, compensate the, the incline and the offset. So it's always a two-point calibration. In the case of Citrix, you can decide whether you want to have a one-point calibration, which only calibrates the offset at air. 
But that all only is important when you really want to do measurements which depend on, which will around the oxygen. Gas characteristics define how the flow is measured, and the gas standard defines how the flow is displayed. Well, these are now comes the different, you know, the influences of, of pressure. Um, you all know that a, a gas at a, at a higher temperature or a lower pressure um, takes up more space, and all this is taken into account by the PF300. So a, a gas cloud with a number of molecules might be much bigger at 30 degrees Celsius than it, than it is at 20 degrees, what we can see here as, a, as an example. The same pressure and temperature are measured and taken into account. The same goes for humidity. Um, if we have no humidity, the gas takes up another space than when we have humidity. And an example, at um, when we change the gas standards from BTP dry, so body temperature and pressure dry, to saturated, so that can go from 400 ml to 392. That's all those little, you know, all those little differences. And this is the effect when you have the wrong gas standard set. You can easily have errors in the two, three, up to five percent range. And then we have the gas type. You have to dial in the gas type manually, but we've gone through that already. You only have air or air plus oxygen. So you're you're in this world. Yeah, but since since people are also using it for anesthesia machines, they have all kinds of crazy stuff. I have a PF three hundred which is set to ATP dry twenty two degrees Celsius, and if I measure pure oxygen instead, I'm just one point point one percent too high. If I measure CO two instead, I'm thirty five percent off. If I measure in another gas standard, I'm twelve percent off. So this is just to give an example on, on the effects uh, where, which, dis, which are described by the, by the gas equation. Or, yeah, select the right gas standard for both. You measured gas in what is displayed. Okay. And this is an example. We were called by a hospital in Switzerland which had troubles with their anesthesia system. They had the anesthesia system showing 400, uh, 540 ml, and they had a GE proximal flow measurement, which is a, a flow measurement right at the patient's, uh, at the Y piece of the patient, showing 620. And they were not happy, happy for obvious reasons. And we can see there are some accuracy levels involved here, some uncertainty levels. That's also always important to know. And then we were called to figure out which of the two measurements were right because we were not involved in any of the two. So the final analysis was actually, the final, the, the root cause was the ventilator, which was running in a different gas standard than the proximal flow measurement. It was running in ATP dry, showing 540, and the proximal, the, the, uh, the proximal flow sensor was measuring or displaying at 620, saturated, but when we compensated that to saturated, to BTPS, it was 598. Together with the accuracies, and we can see that very nicely here, with the uncertainties of the measurement, we could demonstrate that this was the same measurement.